So, uh, well, let me start the Bayesian methods today, and uh, I think this is more interesting than uh, usual statistics, which is like mechanical work. Uh, this needs some more thinking, and I like it more than frequentist statistics. Anyway, so <laughs> let's go back to uh, conditional probability. So, if E and F are events in a sample space, say, Michael, then P of E given F will define this as P of E. F divided by P of E. So if this is a mega say, and we have E, we have F. So it's like if these are finite, this is also number terms, and this divided by this. If mega or the events are finite. So that also means this. So it's like uh, this area divided by this area. It's like probability restricted to F. But then anyway, this is now from here we can also write some people in fact define intersection using this. Uh, so that is P of E given F times P of F. Okay. So these are uh, well, let me. Okay. So these are. Uh, now, if I look at this, I can uh, write the other one. So let me write it here. And let's erase this. What about this one? F given E. Well, it is the same thing, in fact, except the denominator is. I usually remember this by just saying, change this, this is this. Okay, so the denominator in fact is E of F, the one that you are conditioning on. <laughs> okay, if I just plug in this thing here, For this one, so P of F given E is in fact this P of E given F, P of F divided by P of E. So some people say that this is in fact basis formula. Well, and you can see it comes from just these simple facts. But the significance is this. Suppose you have this one, this one, and this one, then you can find this. So this is like a, 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 a prior, for example, then post posterior, we will see that. And then the other one is posterior given prior, or prior given posterior, something like that. So it is something that has happened and something that is going to happen. So. This is an amazing formula, it might look just so simple, but you will see the applications. And uh, Now, I can uh, extend this to more than one event f, and I can extend it this way. So let me 
here is this and uh, talk about another thing which you know it but in anyway, let me so that's law of total probability and uh, so well, let me uh, draw the picture for you so I have omega say sample space and this is divided into uh, some events okay so it's divided into n, n events and I have an event E here. So I have an event E here. Now the assumption is this assumption the Fi's are mutually exclusive. So, like this, and, and omega is in fact the union of the Fi's. So omega is the union of the Fi's and they are mutually exclusive. Now this implies uh, something interesting about this E in fact. This implies that E intersect Fi, these sets are mutually exclusive. You can check that uh, some, uh, if you know some set theory, you can check that these are mutually exclusive and E is in fact union of these things. Okay. So, let me try the exclusive and E is this. So let me erase the uh, picture and uh, let's find a uh, probability of E. P of E. So P of E is P of the union Now these sets are mutually exclusive. Which means the uh, P of the union is in fact sum of the probabilities because they are mutually exclusive. So that is in fact sigma P of E intersect Fi I from 1 to n. That's because of this fact. And I know that this, I can write this in. Uh, Another format, so that is in fact sigma 1 to n p of e given fi p of fi. So, law of total probability is in fact this, given the, the assumption I mentioned for fi's is simply this p of e it is p of a sigma p of e given f i p of f i now why is this important it's because uh, sometimes I, I would say most often we can find this and we know these two 
So we know these, and uh, that makes it easy to find P of E. Well, we cannot find P of E, but we know the probability of E given certain things, and uh, those events, if they cover the whole sample space, and uh, one important is uh, sometimes that, that, that is uh, like if this is E and it's also uh, what we will see in the, in the problem. So, okay, so that is the law of total probability. And let me use this and see what I have in. Okay, now. Another version of Bayes' formula comes from here. So let's uh, try to find this. For one i, let's try to find p of f i given e. Well, I know that this is in fact p of e given f i, p of f i divided by P of E, which I have it over there. So that is P of Fi, and E given Fi, P of Fi, divided by sigma, P of E, uh, well, let's write J here, so E given Fj, so the index, So, uh, some people just did call this one basis formula. Which people is this? Anyway, whatever you. And you can see that again, uh, this is finding this given this. Okay, that is finding this given this. Let me, and also, yeah, and also some, uh, let's just uh, look at the definition of independence. Uh, so, so we say that events E and F in omega are independent if P of E intersect F is P of E times P of F. Uh, remember, the formula wasn't like this, P of E intersect F was P of E given F, P of F, and the other one was P of E intersect F was P of F given E, P of E. So, if I compare these two, with this, this one should equal this one, and this should equal this. So a consequence of this, in fact, which is, well, I can assume this and find that out. So these are like equivalent, and even one of them is equivalent the same. So this uh, means that P of E given F is P of E, which means E does not depend on F. And the other one is P of F given E is P of F. So F also does not depend on E. So it's like mutual. Now this uh, independence is not 
mutual ex I mean mutual exclusiveness is not independence they are two different things in fact if two events are mutually exclusive they are not independent they depend on each other and I leave that to you to think about it what, what that means. so anyway so that is independence now if I have more than two events you can guess that it is uh, defined as uh, P of E intersect F G H blah 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 blah. That's again the product of the uh, each probability. But it's good to see what happens sometimes. Uh, it's we need that, but not sometimes a lot. So what happens if I have this thing, E, F, G, H, uh, well let's just put 4, okay, so, so 4, and see what happens, H, right? Well, I know that this is the P of E given the rest, so that's also an event, uh, intersect times P of F, G, H, right? But this is again then that is P of F given G intersect H P of G intersect H Okay? Well, there is another one so P of E given F and G H P of F given G H P of G given H and P of H. Okay, so this is how this thing decomposes. So if this if these are independent together, say, then this should equal P of A, this should equal P of F, that should equal P of G, and then P of F. So, but you can see that the intersection can be interchanged. So you can just write here this one here, that one. So you can end up with G, for example. So basically it means that each one of them is independent of any intersection of the rest. So, any one of them is the independent of the intersection of any of the rest. So say E is independent of this, E is independent of these two, E is independent of these two, and these two, and each one of them separately. So that is the consequence of uh, writing this down in this form, saying that this is P of E, P of F, P of G, P of H. Well then, so let's, if that is the case, then E should be independent of any combination of the rest, any intersection combination. Say, okay. Okay, let me uh, uh, discuss uh, some problems. Okay. Let's discuss a problem that is relevant these days. That is the and we know we have tests. Okay, so let's say we just choose a test, some, and you know there are lots of tests out there, both for finding out if someone has it or someone already had it. So there are some tests for the antibody and some tests for checking if you have got it. Or you recall, that's the antibody test. Okay, so 
let's uh, uh, de 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 define some events. So let's say uh, that's what I will have in mind. So let's say v plus means you have so v minus you don't have a test. Let's say test plus. Test shows you have it, and minus test shows you don't have it. So, what are some information we have? Some information, well, I'm not saying the information is correct, don't, don't, don't say that. <laughs> uh, because it's hard to gather data on that. And so anyway, we probably know this one, P of V. Well, I, I think I, in the news it was yesterday, it was like 870,000. So that might be 870,000 over, what's the population of the United States? Say in this country, let's say in USA. Not in the world. So that that is like I don't know. Was it was that eight hundred seventy thousand? Uh, what's the population in the United States? The population. Okay, so we can find that. That that should be a very small number. Definitely is a very small number. What else do we have? Maybe you have heard in the news that they talk about false negative. What is false negative? And they said that they, they, they said false negative is when someone has it, but the test shows negative. So you have it given the test is negative, right? So that is what is it? Is it like a test is negative given that you have it? A test negative. Given that you have it, the test is negative. Say, okay. I think I saw in, in the news somewhere, or maybe I read somewhere, that it, for some tests it is 30%. Uh, that is 0.3. That's bad. But anyway, and you can tell why it's bad. <laughs> because you have it and the test says no. Let's go and have fun. Okay. There's another one, so that is a false negative. Given that you have it, the test shows negative. So something is there and you test it and the test doesn't show it. So that is given, given that you have it. What is false positive? Well, you can guess false positive is T plus what? False positive is when you don't have it, like given V minus. So this is the data that we have, data that we have. Now the question is, suppose you are tested using the same test kit, so this is for certain test kit, as I understand there are so many out there, some of them they say it just tells you like that, which I don't trust, but uh, anyway, that's all they have. So for some of them you have, uh, they take more uh, blood, uh, I think that blood is for the Antibody, but anyway, the, the other ones, I guess, some of them are much, much better than the other ones. <sighs> okay, so, and what is the question? The question is this suppose you are tested with the same test kit and you have, and you ask this question, do I have it? So, what, what? Do I have it? What? Do I have it if the test shows positive? 
So you test that, and the test shows positive. And you ask yourself, do I have it? Now, but uh, this virus maybe doesn't do too much, especially if you're young enough. Uh, but suppose it's cancer. That, that's scary. Like pancreatic cancer. And they test you, and they say, yeah, you have it. But still, you can ask this question, what is the probability that I have it given the test is positive? So this is a, an important question, a very standard question that you can ask. So you are asking this question, what is the probability that I have it given that the test is positive? Okay? So I'm trying to show you how uh, these things work and why conditional probability is, uh, I mean, it, it, how it works. Why is it important? Why is it important to have these things? Anyway, so, uh, look at this. This is what? This is assuming that these two, assuming that you have it or you don't have it. So something is there. And there's a test on that. This is the other way. There's a test. The test shows positive, and you're asking yourself, do I have it? Now, here you might say, well, I don't know if I have it or not. Well, suppose you know. Suppose you know, and they test you. That's how they say it's false, false negative or false positive, I guess. I don't know how they, and they know that. But I am assuming that they test it on people who don't have it and see how many positives they see and they test it on people who have it and see how many negatives come out. That's my assumption. I don't know how they do it. If you know, just let me know. But this is the other way around. This is the other way around. You don't have anything, but you're tested and the test is positive. Then you, can, you ask yourself, do I have it? And as I said, this might be not so important. Well, you might just have to rest. Like for two weeks and don't go out, that's okay. But what if it is a test on pancreatic cancer, some deadly cancer? Ebola, say. Well, yeah, that's scary. But you, but you still have some chance. Why? Because you can ask this question. Okay, well, if I have these, uh, the, those information over there, I have false negative, false, false positive. So maybe this is not that, that bad. So well, let, let's look at this thing and see what, how we can find this. So let me write it up here and use So, Bayes comes into the picture and we know by that that we need to say P of T plus even V plus P of V plus over P of T plus. That's one, one, one thing we can write it like this. Do we have... <sighs> Let's look at the information given to me. So let me circle the things that I know. And I said this is, uh, let's say that this is P, this guy here, right? I guess I figured that. So I know this. Do I know this one? Hmm? Well, if I have it and I test it, the test is either positive or negative, right? So if the, this probability is alpha, this one is one minus alpha. So I have this one. One minus alpha. How about this? Mm -mm -mm. No. Need this. Okay. So I have those up, up there. And I need the denominator, P of T plus. Well, let's write P of T plus and see what we can do for P of T plus. 
by the law of total probability, I have something over there. So well, let's just write it as T plus given test is positive. Uh, sorry, given you have it, P of B plus plus P of T plus, you don't have it, P of you don't have it. Okay, let's see which ones we have and which ones we don't. Okay, yeah, wow, that, that's fantastic, I have this one. The main circle. That is P, right? If that is P, what is this? 1 minus P, right? So I have two of them. P and 1 minus P. Uh, let's say T plus V minus, I have this one. And that is V beta. How about T plus V plus? Well, I have over there. One minus alpha. One minus alpha, right? Okay. So then double check, so P of T plus, I needed P of T plus, and that is P of T plus, V plus, V plus, V minus, V minus. And V plus, I just uh, said that's P, small p, and then uh, this is 1 minus P then, and that is, I uh, it's given to me, beta, and this one is the complement of this. Right? It's up there. So what happens? Yeah, I, it seems that I have it. So, it seems that this is, in fact, a nice formula. And P times 1 minus alpha, and then P times 1 minus alpha plus uh, 1 minus P times Now, I, as I said, that we can find that P, that's a small number, but alpha was uh, false negative, was 0.3. So, 0.31 minus alpha, that's 0.7. Uh, and we can see that this is here. So, it depends on beta and 1 minus P. And 1 minus P is a large number, in fact, because if P is a large, I mean, it's close to 1, not a large number. It's uh, close to 1. So, yeah. in fact, P is small. So that's about one, and so it depends on beta and see what false positives are. And I leave that to you, just try to find that and see if you can come up with something and if you are tested. And uh, again, I didn't Google that. Maybe you, you, you can do it yourself, Google it and see uh, how many tests are out there, and uh, if they have data on false negatives and false positives, then you can you can find that for every test that is out there, and also for the other one, the uh, what's that? The uh, antibody test that comes after you have got it. So also you can check that. And you can ask questions. I don't know what question you can ask, but this one makes sense. Asking the question, or you can also ask the other one. You can ask this question. What is the probability that I have it, given that the test is negative? And you can see that that is in fact this one. It goes up there. Right? So, that goes up there. It's not the complement of that. This is not the complement. The complement of this is what? The complement of this is P of V minus given T plus, that is the complement. This plus this is one. This is not the complement of that. Don't, yeah, the students sometimes make that mistake. This condition 
is complement to this condition, but it doesn't make this property a complement of this. No. This should complement this. So these two are complements. I don't care what this is. That, that should be the same, in fact. Yeah, that should be the same to be complement. So anyway. So that is a practical problem. I will uh, put some other problems regarding the cancer, or even this one, if I can find also on beta, I can, I will post that as well. So let me, let's do some more problems in the time that we have here. And let me see, I had some problems prepared for you. Yeah, there are some fun problems. You can ask some fun problems like this. Uh, this is a, a problem one that I have, the one that I will post for you. And that's the problem here. So it says a couple has uh, two children. What is the probability that both are girls if the older of the two is a girl? Probably that uh, both girls, if, which means what, given, given the, the older one, which is older one, Right? So when something is asked and it is something like this, it is a conditional, first thing you have to do is write down this in just pure English language, just like I did. It's important to see which one is conditioned on which one. Sometimes you make a mistake and think this is conditioned on this. And most often it is like this given that or if this happens then what's the point of this, okay? It says here if the older one, so given that the older one is a girl, okay? So given that is this. And then you have to define some events, if you are dealing with events, if you are dealing with random virus, then that's another story, uh, that's another lecture in fact. So if you are dealing with events, then that is what you do. So you define an event, that's what I did, I said G1 means first one is a girl, and G2 second one. So that is in fact P of what? G1 and G2, both are girls, given that G1, right? Given that G1. So that's what the problem is asking for. Okay, so what do you think? This is given. You might say, uh, but let's, uh, let's use the, uh, sometimes it's good to flip it, and sometimes it's good to just write the definition. So by definition, this is P of G1 intersect G2 intersect G1, right? Divided by P of G1. Uh, okay. G1 intersect G2 intersect G1, and G1 intersect G1 is just G1. So on top, I have this. P of G1, G2. Divided by P of G1. So let's find those two probabilities. Now, how many situations do we have when you have two kids? So two kids, you either have G, G, 
you have B, B, G, B, A, B, G. So, G, G is one of the four. G1 is two out of four. So that's one out of four, two out of four, that is one. Okay. So the answer is one half. Okay. So uh, you might have said, okay, G1, I don't care what G2 is, I can say G1 was the body that the first one is a girl, it's just one half. Yeah, this is also one half. Yeah, but <laughs> I like this more than the other one to say, okay, well, I don't care what the second one is. In fact, you can say that the second one is independent of the first one, right? Unless somebody finds some relation between having a girl first and then another girl, so I haven't heard of that. So that is, in fact, this nice and simple problem using Bayes' formula. Okay, now, number two. Well, I don't know what the, the second one is. Well, well this one is... Uh, Well, let me do this. This is saying that suppose 5% of men, so 5%, is it 5%? So that's 0 0.05. 0 0.05 men are color blind. And 0.25% of women are calling. No. Okay, so 0.25% is what? That is uh, 0.25 over 100, that is uh, 0.0025% of women. Well, that's amazing, I didn't know that. So. A colorblind person is chosen at random. What is the probability of this person being male? So, being made, given that the person is colorblind. It is also another assumption. Uh, Assume that there are an equal number of males and females. So another assumption is male over female in the population is one. Which means if you choose a person at random from the society, from the, the community, whatever, uh, the probability of that person being male is 0.5. Okay, that's the meaning. That this is one. We have, we have the same number, which means if you pick someone from the community, the probability that that person is male is 0.5. And the other way, also female is also 0.5. Uh, the problem also says what is the, if the proportion is twice as many males as females. So this is the first part, and the second part is saying that twice as many males as females. Two to one. So that's like a male will be two over three and female will be one over three, right? So that's point sixty six and the other one point thirty three. Okay, let's do this one. That one is the same. So well, let's see what do we have to. So events. So we have this thing. We are assuming that they have the same number. So what are the events? Uh, the first thing that you do is you define some events. Male, male, female, uh, let's write F, 
for this same male and female. Uh, color blind, color blind, positive, color blind, negative, right? So, you're asking for this P of M given color blind. Okay, you have chosen a person at random and that person is colored blind. What is the probability that that person is a man? But you can say from those probabilities over there, that in fact, <laughs> it might be larger than the other one. So let's see what are those two up there. 0.5 men are colored blind. 0.0025 women are colored by what is this one? This first one. It is probably of what? It's, say, it's saying that if I choose a man, so given a man, the probability that it is colored blind is 0 0.05. So that is given M. CB plus given M is 0 0.05. The other one is P of CB plus given female is 0 0.0025. Okay. So it's important to write them down correctly and uh, just imagine what is the first one saying, what is the second one saying, what is it asking for. Uh, is it conditional or just simple? So, anyway, so I want this. Well, this is in fact base. It tells me that this is P of CB plus even M, P of M divided P of CB plus. You, you can see that the same. <laughs> Uh, let's say pattern is emerging like that for COVID-19, you know, right? Uh, let's see, do we have some of them? Yes, we do. We have this one, one half. That's P of M, female, male over female. Male over female was one, which means P of M is one half. P of female is also one half. That's if I choose one person at random, uh, there's a 50% chance that that person is female or male. And CB plus given M, I have this one too. That is 0 0.05. And how about the denominator? The denominator is what I should find. Remember in the other situation, uh, I, I found this. <laughs> So this is the same, it's like the same problem, except in a different context. CB plus is P of CB plus given main, P of main plus P of CB plus given female, P of female, right? Okay, so let's see. I have this one, 0 0.05 and this is one half. I have this one too, one half, but what is this? CB uh, plus given for, oh, I have this one too, point zero zero two five. Oh, do I have all of them? For the other one, I have to find this that was like one minus that, so. Okay, so I have everything and I just plug in and I find the, the probability. So, as you, See, that is the same pattern, the same pattern that happened when I was discussing COVID-19. And uh, so I am going to give you some problems like this. Uh, hopefully, if I can find those, that alpha and beta, which I think I know one of them, but beta, I don't know that. Uh, so let's see, let's see. Okay, so. See you next time, and next time I will start the uh, statistics, in fact. So I will discuss random variables and uh, uh, Bayesian. So Bayesian methods in that sense, say. Okay, so see you next time.